Giants 10, Patriots 7. Welcome to Talking Giants, presented by Seeky. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And back-to-back Tommy DeVito Victory Monday podcast. And Justin, this was the first time I've ever been, like, worried that the myself being undefeated Giants game streak was over. And I don't know why I ever doubted it. Like, as soon as I showed up to the game today, and I was like, oh, no, the streak is not ending. The Giants are winning today. Some are saying we got to get you here earlier. Yeah, that's the question. Like, do people want me to go to less games for the tank, or do they want me to go to more games just to, like, get to the playoff? Like, do we do we need to just send me to the rest of the games and have the Giants sneak into the playoffs? Do, do we now need to purposely manage you coming up to winnable games just to keep this streak alive from – Every year that we're going to be doing this, yeah, or just like kind of end it, like come up for the Eagles game. End no, the streak. you can't like, end it. No, the can't streak will, end the it. The streak will never end it. But hey, Tommy DeVito starts his career two and one, wins his home opener against the Patriots. Obviously, this was a defensive led victory, but I thought DeVito. This was this was actually to me a better game for DeVito than the game last week versus the Commanders. Because where the Commanders, I thought there was a lot of just kind of wide open stuff that he hit there. This game, there was like actually some really nice throws. Obviously, a lot of shit to fix, like especially with the sacks, which we'll talk about. But I thought he played well. But the defense, we got to talk about the Dable Wink story that came from Jay Glazer because that's obviously huge. It's like the main story from this game. Yeah, which is again, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not turning my nose up at that and just looking at that as well. Oh, that's just, that's just media being media. When Jay Glazer some, says something about the Giants, uh, I 100 percent believe it. I don't even think about doubting it. So, uh, where do you want to? start with this you want to start with like the offense and DeVito or the day bull wink but or just kind of where how you feel about this victory yeah we'll, we'll start off with how we feel about the victory and then I I definitely want to get to to day bull and wink because hey, hey you know there's there's obviously a conversation about how do you feel about actually winning this game I mean I, hey I'll be honest I'm kind of back in on now now I want to win every game well <laughs> It's crazy how, fl- how quick I switched on that. I'm back in on not sweating about it because I yeah. thought that with DeVito at quarterback that the Giants actually would be like in legit tank. And now I'm back in like, okay, football games happen. Some team wins yeah. and some teams lose. And then you pick where you pick yeah. and you live with it. Because it was um, the difference between, I think now it's like less than 10%. The Giants have odds of getting a top two pick. And really, being in the top three is where you would have to have, like, oh, like having a legit shot at one of the top QBs. Um, and it would be a 47% chance if they if they lost that they would be um, in, in the top two. What I'm back I mean? in on not talking about tanking because yeah. the tank is over. Yeah, now. The yeah Giants, I agree. This was, the game, this was the game. If they won, the tank is over. If they lost, the tank yeah. is as on as it's ever been. Yeah. Um, but so. I will say about Tommy DeVito. What what is cool? Winning winning will bring this. Whether it's with Tyra Taylor, whether it's with Daniel Jones, whether it's with Tommy DeVito, I mean there there is some Jersey juice going on in that locker room right now, and, and at least confidence. guys are like they're they're excited, and that and that's like the fun part where it seems like his energy has even like the Giants aren't going out there and scoring thirty points. This was not an offensive game; this was a defensive game, like you said. But it just seems like the the energy that DeVito's bringing is is being infectious and it's going through the entire team which is which is a cool thing to see through this you know what's been a bad stretch of a season yeah and like there he's playing with confidence right like yeah. today like the game versus Dallas like they were totally overmatched right and then last week it was against i mean we were saying on the podcast last week they need to fire Jack Del Rio paired with a great game called by the Giants and we're like this is more scheme than anything they could have had most guys at quarterback this is the first game where I actually thought DeVito just played quarterback you know and that's to his um to his benefit and his Eagles tied the game um that was to his benefit and his detriment which uh I think there's much more positive than negative in this game for DeVito considering the expectation but he got Jalen Hyatt first like the most receiving yards for a, a wide receiver for a Giants player since Kadarius Tony versus the Cowboys in 2021. Wow. Defensively, like Okereke, man, can just continues the ball out. We saw McKinney make plays. Um, so there's obviously a lot of positives on the game uh, game field. But DeVito, like DeVito was making good throws, mm-hmm. right? Like I thought the most impressive is uh, versus Hyatt on the – like there's cover two, corners kind of sitting with it too and just kind of holds on and puts a beautiful ball on Hyatt on, on the – like those hole shot, like – Whole shot was probably like the most overused word of the offseason talking about Daniel Jones and like steps forward that he could make. Um, DeVito did it. I mean, I, I knew it immediately just seeing it. It's like he, it was a very quick, like, 
snap and release by DeVito. I think DeVito maybe looked somebody off for, for a quick second, but, I mean, DeVito kind of just got that ball, snapped it, threw it, and, like, oh, oh, that was, that was a whole shot throw to Jalen Hyatt. Kind of yeah. knew it Kind of knew it right in that moment. And that was a third, I think that was a third down. You had the third and 16 out and up to Hyatt for 41 yards. He almost had another pass to Hyatt that J.C. Jackson just barely got a hand yeah. on. That was a nice throw. If this is it for Tommy DeVito, like, I want to go back and, like, if you, that's a, like this is a positive play from DeVito. That's a positive DeVito play. Guarantee is seventy five percent of them are on third and ten and longer. Oh, they were. I mean, I didn't. I don't know the exact number, but there's like okay, here's this good play. It's third down. Like the one the, third and long. The Isaiah Hodges touchdown was third down. The third the Jalen Hyatt played before that Crazy. was a third down. Uh, like most of Hyatt's stuff was slurred down, but there there was just like some confidence QB play from Devito considering the expectation. Now there's negative I want to get to. Even like the Shep drop on the sideline, that was it's good. Like that post wheel they had the flat, and you he's Devito actually saw the corner kind of sitting where he that little uh not not the wheel because Shep sat on the wheel where like he just hey he moved to the flat with his shoulders and moved that corner mm-hmm. and then fired it into Shep and Shep ends up dropping it. Yeah, there were two guys right right there. Yeah, and he uh, you know, he's I mean his numbers were uh 17 to 25, 191 yards, 7.6 yards per attempt, which is good, and the six sacks which we'll talk about. But there was three drops in there too. You had a drop by Wandale, a drop by Saquon, and then the big drop by Shepard. Like they probably that's probably another twenty yards or so. Yeah, that were left on the field. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the Saquon drop would have went anywhere. That was a screen. I think Wandale's drop was on a third and long anyway. That it was like a that five yard. Was a check. But the Shep drop was an explosive play. Yeah, and that that was that was certainly the the big one for for the Giants. And they were driving down the field that first drive of the game where Wandale fumbled. I think honestly that Wandale fumble was the biggest negative for Tom, not not the biggest negative for Tommy DeVito's possible stat sheet because that's possibly a touchdown. They were driving down the field. I think the first drive of the game. Yeah. Um, now there's still like growth to say. Okay, this guy can be a consistent backup QB in the NFL. Um, it's funny rewatching the game. It's it's Devito's basically like one. It's like just a decided like, hey, throw the ball on like a screen or you know mm-hmm. an outlet or whatever. But he's kind of like deeper sack right where. Yeah. There was multiple times where there was guys like within like five yards, like wide open right in front of his face, and he's just kind of like stuck downfield and then turns in the sack. You know, like there's a first and ten, they run a soft zone, Wandale's on just the stop route, and wide open, like right in his line of vision, ends up taking a sack. You know, he takes a sack on a second and nine with a guy open. You know, they were trying to run some quick game, he doesn't throw it, and he had the play where he scrambled and fumbled. And then the third and two at the end of the game where they're trying to, put, you know, put the game, mm-hmm. finish the game, Shep, again, is wide open in front of him, and, and he ends up taking the sack. Um, so, like, there's still the, there's still growth that needs to be said before I go and say, hey, Tommy DeVito should absolutely be the Giants' backup QB next year. And obviously, QB is going to be a much bigger conversation backup and whatever if, if it's Daniel Jones or whoever. But just be, like, a backup quarterback. Yep. But he's definitely done enough where you're like, this guy's not just – like UDFA garbage that you throw no, out not in, at all. in preseason. He's not, not Clay, at all. he's not Clayton Thorson. He's not yeah. Brian Lewerke. Uh He's not even Jake Fromm. Like, he's shown to be a lot more than what Jake Fromm oh, is. Way more. And I think the coaching staff has done well to, hey, we're going to put some emphasis on explosives with him and, and the way, because he's not going to run this quick game perfectly, and we're going to yeah. take sacks anyways. And they kind of – that was, you know, one thing we said about the coaching staff going into this game, like things that were invested in with the Giants' season being over as far as, like, you know, winning being important is like okay you did that versus the horribly coached jack del rio commanders yeah, can you do it against with no else? with no pass can you do it against the patriots who again aren't aren't a good defense without judon or christian gonzalez yeah. but they're not like horribly coached and they're not they're not just stupid right they're not right. you're not playing just a stupid defense. They had three, i mean they had three plays of 20 plus yards which hey you know hey shep the shep drop would have maybe been four um versus the commanders they had eight so it wasn't the Huge offensive output. I mean, also, how many turnovers did they force? And they didn't take advantage of it quite as much as they did against Washington. But, hey, I mean, Tommy DeVito. The first drive. Story. First drive, you're moving down the field. And, they are. And Wandale, Wandale fumbles. drops the sweep. Um, um, but, I mean, it, anyway, I mean, just like, it's, it's you were there. I mean, you, you saw the, it's, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool Jersey story, man. You know, they, they, they got played. some, ju- coming out uh, <laughs> in the player intros, DeVito's was like, 
three times as loud as Saquon's. As, as anybody else, and they played the Sopranos intro. They they played the Sopranos intro after they scored the touchdown. I mean, it, it's it's cool. It's it's cool. I, I found myself 7.30 a.m. I was watching Don Bosco 2015 state championship highlights of Tommy DeVito throwing, throwing the ball around MetLife Stadium against St. Joe's Monfils. And they, so. they brought it back up on the radio that the Patriots tried to take DeVito after the preseason when they yeah. after cutdowns tried to get him to their practice squad and he decided to stay with the Giants we had this moment like what if this was Matt Barkley versus Tommy DeVito um in this game could, could have been imagine? a Tommy DeVito but revenge like, what, game what DeVito did was allow Hyatt to have the Giants best receiving game since since the fucking Kadarius Tony game yeah since the Kadarius Tony game that was the best receiving and yeah. so I guess we should talk about Hyatt well, no, individually well, and save it save it because I want to pivot the Dable Wink stuff. I want. I, wa- I want to pivot. We'll talk about some other individual performances on offense, and inc- including Hyatt and what and what he did well. But I feel like we're we've gone too long, and I I do think this is the biggest headline to come out of this game, and I think this is the biggest thing to watch for the re- the rest of the year. Brian Dable and Wink Martindale and their relationship. Yeah. So break it down. Jay, Jay Glazer. Glazer came out um, with. I, I I wish I put the exact quote on this. But that Brian Dables and Wink Martindale's relationship is like strained, and that like he could be out and he could be out even in season, right? And again, you hear stories, you you think, what does this mean? Do you take it with a grain of salt? There's no like, there's nothing that anyone can convince me that that's not a hundred percent real because it's Jay Glazer. When Jay Glazer talks about the Giants, he is one hundred percent spot on, dead on. There's no doubt. I mean, he has not missed with basically anything, but specifically to the New York Giants, he has been plugged in since the start. Since the start of his relationship with Michael Strahan way back in the day, Jay Glazer knows what he's talking about. So first, it is real that there has to be some strain in the relationship. Now, I don't want to get speculative on what start of it, but I think we can all say pretty confidently, Justin, the Xavier McKinney situation a couple weeks ago has at least some role in this yeah if it didn't start it uh, i like this line we were talking before the show if it didn't start it it maybe accelerated the tension that was between them if there is tension between yeah them. that's why my question is like when did it start and when did it accelerate right yeah. did it start with the xavier thing and then accelerate off of it and we've seen like wink th- run his like most conservative defenses the la- you know before this game the last couple of weeks like f- changing all that zone coverage was that day will be in like stop pressing up and playing man and all this stuff. So we'll see. Like, I don't know exactly. Again, I'm not going to speculate, but the one thing we know is like McKinney's thing had something to do with it. Right. Yeah. And Dable, we, we talked about it on the mailbag pod. Like Dable would have not done anything near what wink did where wink just went on and on and on and, and really made McKinney look bad where Dable just kind of made it like seem like a non-issue. Um, so, you know, Dable, Dable was had to have not been happy about that. Right. And, you know, and that that press conference was also on a Thursday. Right. And they asked Wink, like, is there going to be like any type of punishment for Xavier McKinney? And Wink kind of like, ah, Dave, Dave's handles that, which is like, it's Thursday. You you would know. You yeah. would know by now. So yeah. that's almost like a shot at Dave's like, yeah, maybe I would do it. But Dave's Dave's he doesn't believe in that. or right. what. So that is real. Now, Dave's. Gave Wink the game ball and, you know, you know, to break it down, you know, my buddy Wink Martindale. I think that's semantics more than anything, maybe. Obviously, that's some PR stuff, but hopefully there is some type of effort from both sides to mend that relationship because I don't want to lose Wink Martindale. No. Obviously, he's not, he has his flaws like, uh, you know, most defensive coordinators do, but I don't want to move on from Wink Martindale. No. I like the way he calls a defense and his, uh, his ability to change and adjust to his personnel and dictate terms. Um, like I do like, and I, and I honestly, like I kind of was falling in love with, you know, with Patrick Graham and the defenses on the two high and I'm kind of against that a little bit now, unless you are great at it, right. Yeah. Unless you were the best at it, but like, I kind of want to like, and I think the def- I'll you know, game, the, the game's going to change back to where it's like, you got to get a little more aggressive. That. We're, you know, no more is like Brandon, the Brandon Staley's of the worlds or, you know, what, what they were doing out there in LA. It's like, it's not, it's not that it's no longer relevant. I mean, if, if you call it the defense, offenses you call, are adjusting to it. Right. And they're and the running, NFL cyclical. They're gonna, running the ball more and teams are starting to run the ball more and they're starting to run it more efficiently than they have been in the past. And yeah, you know, I, I still would rather be 
I would I would rather sacrifice having a, an, an, an iffy run defense for the sake of having a good pass defense and preventing explosive pass plays. But Wink Martindale has also shown that just because you're playing single high and just because you're blitzing a lot, that doesn't mean that you're allowing a lot of explosive pass plays. He's shown that over the last couple of years. That show, he showed it with the time of Baltimore, and he's even showed it with this time with the New York Giants. I really hope, Bobby, I really hope that it's it that this the strain in the relationship is not really stemming from the whole Xavier McKinney situation. Because I I think you had the locker room backing Wink Martindale. I think you had Wink Martindale obviously just ma- making sense. And we've seen that Xavier McKinney does this kind of thing now with two different coaching staffs. Two different coaching staffs. One, one with Patrick Graham where he would have gotten paid a lot more money if Patrick Graham was still the defensive coordinator and Xavier McKinney is having, you know, four, five, six interceptions every year because he's playing in a too high system and it's easier for McKinney to get interceptions in that system versus the single high safety system where he's been playing a lot of box safety this year. Yeah. So he would have been naturally more of a playmaker under Patrick Graham, yet he, throw, yet he throws that coaching staff under the bus. And by the way, Jerome Henderson is still the DB coach. So yeah. what, what, is, you know, what does that mean? Um, I really hope it doesn't start from that because you had Wink Martindale being like, well, I, I genuinely asked Xavier McKinney, what, what, what are you referring to? And he, could, he couldn't name anything, couldn't, couldn't name a thing of what he was trying to refer to about kind of miscommunication or not hearing leadership. He made someone that was being stupid look stupid. And then Bobby O'Karake the next week says, yeah, I, I, I don't really know, man. I think Andrew Thomas might have said too, yeah, I, I don't really know where he's coming from. So you had other guys that were also saying, I don't really know where he's coming from, where I think Brian Dable is very much, and we and we know this, he is so, so, so a player's coach. So, so a player's coach. Where I even heard him, this may not have anything to do with anything, but I even heard him, you know, during today's presser, you know, after the game, he was talking about DeVito and turning the ball over. Like, are, are you going to tell a player to that he can't, like, you can't turn the ball over? And he's like, well, I don't really tell any player that they can't do anything. I just try and point them in the right direction. I think that's like his approach to coaching just in general. I'm not going to tell a player that he can't do anything or can't say anything, but I'm going to try and put him in point and point him in a good direction. And they do I really stuff. hope it doesn't start with that. I hope if anything, it starts with the miscommunication on, Hey Wink, I don't want you being so aggressive, man, because we just don't, they don't have the personnel, especially in the secondary to, to play press and to play so aggressive. They don't really have that this year with, you know, especially with when a Dory's out, they really don't have with a Dory out. They don't with the yeah. Dory. And I think, they do but they also we'll talk about the defensive game plan today where teams will without decks the one they'll run the ball on you and two they'll just throw rub routes yeah. and, and and you know screen passes and stuff um but i i would i'd be like i'd love to find out what their both approaches were to the deontay bang situation right where dave was like yeah, yeah. we don't we right. dealt with that we, we don't want that right was wink on the opposite side where i want my guys talking shit like i i would love to find out these stories um from that but here's what i will say is like because Dave's gave Wink the game ball, says the only thing we argue about is the last piece of pizza. And the it's players, very funny. The players are on PR. Oh, Dory Jackson this. said the same thing. So it's I Pat will Hanlon say. Pat masterclass. I will say between the, ga- between the game ball and Dory Jackson and Brian Dable used the same line. Oh, the only thing that they fight about is the last piece of pizza. That, I think that was a very much a coached up thing of. That, hey, hey! If you don't know what to say, this is a good line to say. So I hope that they can mend this, right? I really hope. But so Jay too. Glazer didn't just like and be like, "Well, there's naturally going to be tension when you lose." Absolutely, I agree. But there's difference in tension, and then what Jay Glazer reported, like Wink could be out in season. Like that's, I'm, I I will not buy any PR coming from the Giants organization yeah. on that. That's real. That's real. Dave Can't, also didn't say that the report wasn't true. Because he was a, he was asked, "Is there tension?" And he's like, "Oh, the only thing that there's tension about is, you know, who gets the last slice of pizza." That's where that line came from. And then a reporter followed up and said, "So was the report not true?" And he said, "The only thing I'm going to say is Wink and I have a very good relationship." He didn't say it wasn't true. Yeah, I have respect for Wink. So yeah, I have respect for Wink. Yeah. So that that must be a pretty intense argument for that last slice of pizza. Yeah, so must be pretty intense. Um. So again, I I, I am. I mean, we talk about things we're investing in the rest of the season. Is this extremely like I, I, every little thing that happens, like every Wink Martindale press conference is must listen for the rest of the season. Every single one. And Joe Shane has his press conference at ten thirty Monday morning. So when you guys are listening to this, like I'm, 
that's oh. gonna you gotta hear gotta hear what he's saying about that, right? You know, I, I don't want I don't really care about what he has to say about the Leonard Williams trade. I want to hear what he says about this and yeah. how you know the DJ situation. Like that's gonna be a must watch presser. Um, so and there's gonna be a lot yeah. to come out of that. And, and, I'll, and I and I just want to go over this too. Giants defense since week six, so this is post Dolphins game and Bills game on. Overall EPA per play, they're twelfth. EPA per drop back, they're fourteenth. EPA per rush, ninth. They have a top ten rushing defense for basically the second half of this year. I hope like Wink Martindale's a good defensive coordinator, and like I, if Mike Kafka were to get a head coaching job, or if they ever wanted to move off of Mike Kafka, we've talked about how like I'm not panicking over that because this is the end of the day. I think this is Brian Dable's offense. Like this is Brian Dable's the offensive coach, and this is his offensive scheme. But if they move off of Wayne Martindale, odds are that is a huge, huge philosophical change. It's an identity change. It's such a huge change for what, from what I think Joe Shane has been drafting for, what I think they've been signing for, and what I think they look for in certain guys and what they look for in, in, in defensive players. It'll be such a huge philosoph- – it'll be a huge change in everything if Wayne Martindale moves away. And it's not like he's bad. I, I think he's a good defense coordinator. I really hope that they work something out. And like, really, like in my head right now, the only like person that I'd be like, yeah, like I, I view that as a possible upgrade, and I think I would view it as an upgrade is Leslie Frazier. If Leslie Frazier were to come back, and because he was, he was. I think the Giants was one of the camps that he was like at this summer. So yeah, so, and that, I'd, I'd like to talk to our cover one guys more in depth about Leslie Frazier because obviously the numbers are good. Um, but th- there is some flaws to that defense, and again, when you're playing against a better QB, again, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not going to do a breakdown of Leslie Frazier, right. even no, though, even though right I did now. like him as a head coach candidate, I think he could possibly still be that. And we've seen Sean McDermott now have to basically, f- essentially, fire two coordinators in less than you know less than uh, a year. Um, so yeah, that's that is any anyone telling you that that's not a big deal is wrong. Jay, when Jay Glazer says it, it's fact. Um. And so I, I, I'm 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 very, I'm enthralled at what to to see out of yep. that comes out of that. Now with, let's get back to Jalen Hyatt though. Yep. Wait, can we talk about something first? Let's talk about something. What first. do you want to talk about? Let's talk about Candlewick. Oh, let's talk about the Candlewick Diner. That's right. We had a great tailgate today. Uh, I want to thank everybody yeah. that that came out. Um, this is my you know this is our favorite tailgate of the year. The fact that Bobby's up here. The fact that we can provide some some free food for a lot of people. Um, we had Ruben Ruben Vargas. That came by a lot of international people. We had somebody from Vancouver that that drove that drove down. We had somebody from uh, we had the big with the big blue UK guys, which was UK very guys. happy for them. One they got to do the event at Reds, which um, you know some of us went to. Uh, they got they had press credentials, and then Banks and Papa had them in yeah. the radio booth, which was very cool. You had Ruben, who's like part of the Spanish broadcast, and he's, he's, and he's here. working for the NFL. That's so, it's, so it's, awesome. No, you saw like at, at, you know Alex Big Blue of the yes. Bronx, like he he's has getting, like it's kind of cool to see like people that like we've come up and are doing their own content, like just yeah. having their moments. And as less we've had like some moments like that too, like it's very cool to see them have that and just. Every time we are around talking Giants fans and talking to Taylor, it's like it makes you like just happy that we're able to do this. Yeah. And and it makes me even happier like like drive by Candlewick Diner. Like it's it's a two minute drive away from my hotel, two minute yep. drive away from the stadium. And it's like we got a relationship with that guy. Yep. He has great food, best diner in the freaking in the state, maybe even the country. Kick rocks if you disagree. Um maybe we should have what the fuck is up, Dennis? What the fuck is up, Candlewick Diner? We got to do something in Candlewick Diner, but yeah, they're the best, um, and it's it's been really cool. And, and, and they make it happen. Diner. They make it happen. So thank you to the Candlewick Diner. Um, they're located a mile up the road from MetLife Stadium. You never know what Giants player you're going to bump into too. A lot of the UDFA's, a lot of the the day three draft guys, they go there. Hey, I does mean, Benton Whitley go there? Oh, I bet you he does. Benton Whitley's. This is the Benton Whitley, Benton Whitley podcast. By just, the way, just when you thought that was Boogie Basham, nope. You're wrong. Uh, they have a full service bar in house bakery and free delivery. Extensive menu from breakfast to burgers to steaks to pasta. Uh, Mr. Brownstone loved the Candlewick Diner. He said, "Please, please tell your guy at the Candlewick Diner that I really enjoyed it." That's what he said. So check out the Candlewick Diner in East Weatherford, New Jersey, for all your diner favorites. Bobby Skinner, you'll be glad you did. Thank you, you will the be glad you did. The Bills kicked a field goal. They're up 34, 31. Eagles are in their territory. You guys already know the outcome. I don't. Um, so Jalen Hyatt. Obviously, again, biggest receiving game 
uh, for the Giants since the Tony game. First 100-yard receiving game since Isaiah Hodgins in the playoffs. Um, again, just like doing some better things, right? Like obviously we know he can get open vertically, and that's huge, right? Like I don't feel like that should just be taken for granted. And we know that like if the Giants go out and get a QB and this big arm QB who can make throws, like – Hyatt is going to look a lot better, right? And this yeah. was even before like Daniel Jones's bad ball this year in training camp, right? When we were, I mean, training camp, we were very high on Daniel Jones. But a take I had was like, this guy's the first player where I feel like Daniel Jones not having elite arm talent could hold this sin player back. There's there has not been a single player on the Giants where I'm like Daniel Jones' talent holds them back. Obviously, like if you compare him to the best QBs, right? But like not having the Mahomes, Herbert, Allen, arm talent, like I felt like could hold Hyatt back. So if they do get that guy, Hyatt's going to look a lot better. He's going to have a lot more of these vertical plays, um, you know. And then, but just more other stuff, right? Like the even that vertical play, like it was an out and up, off coverage. Like get that guy to bite on the out, get up, make that play. The third down before the Isaiah Hodgins touchdown, right? Drive drag route. We've seen a lot of times him catch that drag route in the preseason, whatever, and it gets tackled. Makes a guy miss. That was nice. Bam. Had a nice catch on a, on a slant that was in tough coverage. Um, and we've seen him just make good catches even on those vertical routes. Um, man, it's it's cool to see. Again, he's not going to have like consistently great statistical games this year uh, with the Giants QB situation, with yeah. how he's not really in the front of progressions all the time. And as long as he's also not running a full route tree yet. Like, I, I think I Jalen Hyatt's... The biggest time period in Jalen Hyatt's young, basically, I think what will decide his the the trajectory of his NFL career is this offseason and how he works this offseason on to develop his route running on what Brian Dable and Mike Kafka or, you know, Brian Dable and whoever, you know, what they want him to do this offseason. I think this offseason will be the biggest time for Jalen Hyatt to get better because are you just going to be just on Jackson? Right? Like, hey, that's your ceiling. That's the ceiling, right, for Jalen Hyatt maybe right now. Are you just going to be Deshaun Jackson where you're, you're going to average 30 yards per reception in your NFL career? Or are you going to develop a little bit more nuance to your game so you're not just, you know, what he did today was awesome. Just Deshaun was, Jackson I'd be thrilled with. No, no, but, but you understand what, you understand what yeah, I'm saying, yeah, though, yeah, right? Yeah. Like a little bit more nuance and a little bit, you know, developing more of a route tree where today he ran drags and it was a lot of streaks and it was, and it was some good stuff. So uh, I loved it, though. I, I, I really did enjoy it, and it was nice to see. Jalen Hyatt get involved and I and I felt like it was a very it was an easy hundred yards e, like you know usually you have players that really got to work r- work and grind out to get 90 yards um, I even thought that Darren Waller against Washington like I, I thought he might have gotten I think it was 98 or earlier yeah, this 98. year but I mean that was like a tough game where you know you gotta you know you're gritting it, gritting it out and you're taking some hits Jalen Hyatt felt like a nice quick and easy five catches 100 yards all right cool which is awesome that's what you want was there any other like Guy, I mean, we talked about DeVito. I mean, really nobody else had any receiving output. Isaiah Hodgins, it was nice after that third down yeah. to, again. See if three receiving touchdowns now? On the year, no, two. Two. Danny had the one lied. Arizona. Um, so he is second on the team in receiving touchdowns now after Saquon Barkley. So leads all leads all receivers and tight ends. Um, but that was a nice, like, caught down the end. Should have been like a kick a field goal situation. Stiff arms that cat and, and gets it. But we got to talk about the defense because they're obviously the guys who made um, yeah. the main plays. I'm also lo- I'm looking them. forward to hearing what you have to say about JMS. Um, I, I, I thought JMS and Ben Bredesen were kicking ass at the beginning of the game. Pew screwed up. Thomas gave up like an actual sack. Yeah. Which is like. Again, Thomas is hurt. Which sucks. Thomas is playing on a torn MCL and probably a messed Sprain up hamstring. MCL. Sprain MCL. Sprain MCL. Partially torn. Whatever you want to call it. Um, he shouldn't be playing, but he's playing. And I mean, honestly, like, Fuck. do these do these two wins? These two wins probably don't happen if Andrew Thomas isn't here. So Eagles win. Eagles win. That's Bills, what they Bills do. cover though, since it's overtime, they don't that, have to kick the extra point. That's what they do. So they just win. Son of a bitch. They don't even. Look, they're they just like me. The eagle. The Bobby Eagles handshake winning, winning everything. There you go. Um, this is. I, I want to. Why do you think Juan Dale has had like no production after his first few games back coming from the ACL? And be like, oh, this well, guy's a, this guy's like improved on the stuff, and he looks be able to move. I, I mean, how many weeks have we have we been without Tyrod Taylor now? But even with Tyrod Taylor, he didn't really put up production. It was basically just those three games when he came back, like the 49ers, he split, and then it was um, 
What were the two games after that? The Seahawks and uh, oh, tough. Anyways, he. I, 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 I want to do some is, maybe. I want to kind of look into that maybe for the buyer week. I want to hear. I, I want to see. I mean, we we could we both agree that it, odds are Tyrod Taylor. If Tyrod Taylor is cleared for the Packers game, he's coming off IR. If he's yeah, clear, he's the starter. He's the starter, which could be a shock to a lot of people listening to this. But I I I, I genuinely think Tyrod Taylor will be the starter. Um, I actually I actually think that's better for Devito too. Like get this playing yeah. experience, get some confidence. Now we got to work on getting the quick game down. Yeah. Now we got to work on not taking sacks and type of that stuff. And that's exactly why I think Wandell his usage has gone down because you know maybe he's part of progressions, but yeah. Tommy DeVito just has not been like if Tommy DeVito was working the quick game a little bit better than he is right now doesn't doesn't even have to be perfect. I think there's a chance that Tommy DeVito is the starter possibly going forward to see what you have in the young guy. But you, you see the explosive plays. You see the good things. You see the positives. Takes sacks. Doesn't really work the quick game all that well on early downs. There's a reason why the offense is getting the third and long. It's so funny to see a <laughs> third crazy. string quarterback who's like, usually it's like, yeah, he can work the quick game. He's not really going to do anything else past the sticks. And DeVito's like, nah, no, past the sticks, opposite. this guy can fucking throw the ball a little bit. Obviously, like when after 50 yards, the ball flutters a little bit. Um, yeah, but how often are you doing that? Yeah, but but it's like quick game though. Like guys, right, wide open, right in front of yeah. his face. He's not going to throw. It. Yeah, it's so kinda, I think I think Wondell, funny his flaws and strengths. I so. think Wondell will get get involved in a little bit more. And you know, also we haven't really talked about this. We talked about it with you know Dable and Kafka. You know, scheming guys open against Washington and how that was great. It's all it's it's also credit to Dable and Kafka for getting this UDFA ready to rock and roll. Yeah. And, you know, it's credit to Devito for doing what he's got to do. And we knew that he could. We knew that he could keep an offense on schedule. Like we we talked about that at Illinois. Hey, this this we actually thought that he did that he could work the quick game well. So it's kind of surprising to see how it's the exact opposite at the NFL level. But I also think it's credit to Kafka and Wink uh, or K- Kafka and uh, Dable for adjusting their offense. And I actually, you know, we got to get more explosive. Which that's how the NFL works. I think it's honestly because he's worried about turnovers at the quick game is like where you got to be on time. And if you're a little bit late, that actually leads to more turnovers right. than airing the ball downfield. And which shit. you see that with Jones. Um. And the way teams have like kind of changed the way they play, like the quick game is almost more dangerous than pushing the ball yeah. down the field for the Giants. And I think that might be a little bit of a product too. It's like, as much as Dable said, it's not. I do think he's being coached like, do not turn over the fucking ball. Yeah, like don't turn over the ball. Don't lose this game. Well, for no, us. well, no, you, well, no, don't. Well, remember, Dable doesn't say you can't turn over the ball. He just tries to point point people in a good direction. Yeah, but he's essentially playing like deep sack, deeper sack. Um, so. Even though there is some guys like where it's like, hey, you don't have to have great timing on this. Just throw the damn ball to Sterling Shepard wide open in front of your face on third down and two uh, to end the game. Uh, do you want to talk about something first? Because we're at a natural pause. I do want to talk about something first, and it is one of my favorite things to talk about. And that is SeatGeek because they came in the clutch for me. Today's episode is sponsored by Kiki, SeatGeek. And if mm. you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes tickets buying tickets super simple. So with the Giants not being as good, I waited till last second to get my tickets for this game. Worked out great. And it was great because with SeatGeek, they give you, you could do lowest to highest, best value. And usually I'm a lowest to highest guy, right? And I want to see, like, I want to at least get in the middle, but I'll be, I'll be up in the last row of the stadium as long as I'm in the middle. But this game, the prices were going down on SeatGeek. And I was like, you know what? I want to go sit down low. I want to be near the players. I want to be near the I want to see Joe Judge. I want to see his, I want to see the his eyes. That was a bold decision by you. I want to see Jabril Pepper's eyes. Mm. And I got a great deal on some Seek, uh, tickets from SeatGeek down near the near the field. The closest I've ever been to the field besides um, a game where a lot of people left and I just went and hung out with license plate guys. Oh, sure. Uh, so that was the, we had a great time uh, at the game for because of SeatGeek. And there are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including sports, concerts, festivals, and more. They always want to make sure that you are getting a good deal. So when you're on the app, look for the green dots, baby. Good, uh, green means good. Red means bad. You see a red dot, especially like, like on you, you might be getting shot. SeatGeek ain't going to do that. They're going to give you the green dots. Every ticket is backed by their buy guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets out of the event swaps. We get the hookup. Use code Giants for twenty dollars off your first purchase at SeatGeek. That's twenty dollars off your first purchase with promo code Giants. Click the link in the description to download the app. By the way, speaking of violence, one Cam Brown threatened to like fight a Patriots fan after the game. Nice. Yes, he and did. I gave a loud like kill him on the kickoff, and one second later. 
Carter Maybe Coffin. Maybe less than a second. Like Carter Coffin killed the guy. So yeah. uh, I got a good chuckle out of the people around me in the crowd. I was like, he listened to me. He listened to me. And they're like, very funny. Six foot seven man yelling, kill him in the middle yeah. of the game. Um, I you, chipped my tooth. Like, why aren't you up there with the other people that yell, kill him? Yeah, I do. It's section 315, I do it. Uh, so thank you, Siki. Only be, on kickoffs. You'll be glad you did. I can't believe we went this long without talking about the... If it wasn't for the Wink stuff and it being a DeVito game, we probably would have started with the defense in this game. We haven't done that yet this year, I don't think. No, uh, we, we have. Have we? There's There's got to be one game where we talked about the defense first. Was it the Jets game? Yeah, it probably was the Jets game. Good for me. Or did we? I don't know. Um, or did we? This was a Bobby O'Karake, like, master class in this game. The Dexter inter- Lawrence out. Dexter Lawrence out. And the Patriots played like Dexter Lawrence is out. They just ran, they ran the ball pretty well. They should have ran it more. It's also a, a, a <laughs> Mac Jones. It's, it's also like a how bad are the Patriots quarterback situation, oh right? My Mac God. Jones benched again. How many times can you bench a guy in one season? It's insane. But, like, I just I don't have the numbers for Zappi. Mac Jones, 7 of 7, 45 yards on throws behind the line of scrimmage because the Giants are running man, so they're Terrific. throwing screens and stuff. And they, it was frustrating. Like, you just knew they were going to throw screens and do well, and they did do that. On throws, not like 10 to 20, right? Sometimes it'll be like 0 to 10, this guy's good, 10 to 20. Just one plus yards down the field. 5 of 14, 44 yards, two interceptions. He had more yards on seven throws behind the line of scrimmage than he did 14 throws past the line of scrimmage and the interceptions. I mean... Okereke, though, dude, it's so awesome to see this guy just continue to thrive and make plays and make plays. This guy's on a four-year deal. It's getting better. Please, like, stay healthy to where you're, you're – we're resigning you after year three of this. We're extending you. Has his second interception of the, game, of, his, of the season, the fourth one that he's been involved in. He almost had another interception on a third uh, third and four on that last drive. He had drive. a pass deflection, yeah. Uh, had another pass deflection in it. A bunch of big run stops to fight, despite the fact that – they kind of were just figured, hey, let's just pull our guards, double the front side defensive tackle, and they're not going to be able to stop us very often. But he also, like, to that credit, like, not having decks, they didn't have the big runs, the Patriots, right? Like, they didn't no. pop off any big runs. They were able to get those steady yards. Nine, but part of that yards. is because that really the it. linebacker play from Okereke. Um, he's just playing at an insane level. And, again, their only touchdown came off of an Okereke interception that got the ball down to, like, the 25 or the or the 30 or whatever it was. It's so much fun to watch great linebacker play. And that's what we're seeing, like, pretty much week in, week out with Okereke is great linebacker play. It was cool to see even, like, without Dex seeing it happen. Yeah, like having a guy step up and just be like, okay, like, I'm, I'm the best player on this unit. Now, yeah. Right? Like, he's okay, Dex like is a- not here. This all pro player. I'm the best player on this unit. And if the Giants were like, I was talking with it. Uh, I was talking about the Pro Bowl because it's back in Orlando this year, and I want to go. If the Giants were winning games, OKRK would be a Pro Bowler. Yeah, like, yeah. He might not get All Pro because there's, right, know, there's other a good lot linebackers, but pros, like yeah. he would be a Pro Bowl because our fans would get behind him and what he's doing for this defense. Um, it's just like it's a pleasure to watch Bobby OKRK and to think of how bad the linebacker play was for the Giants last year, right? Yep. Like Jalen Smith and whoever they put next to him, whether it was Tay Crowd or, or Michael McFadden, who's playing a lot better. Guess why? Because Bobby O'Carrick right. is there. And obviously he's made his own growth as a player too. Um, but he just continues to make play after play after play, and he's playing with confidence. And I'm excited for him to be a leader of this defense for a long, long time. I feel like he single-handedly is like – I, I'm am, I am amazed at how many turnovers he's been part of this year, between punching the ball out, interceptions, tipping balls up. Like I, it, it's I think his energy is what is making this defense dr- drive and stay stay sustaining itself over the second half of these, this year because it easily easily could have gotten to a place where there's you know a lack of leadership and. Leonard Williams is traded away, and that's Dexter Lawrence's buddy, and now Dex is missing a game. It could have easily gotten to a place where it got bad. Like and this is a like a below average defense, but you know, they have they hey, they have their games against Dallas and they have their games against good offenses where, hey, guess what? You know, I, I'm not gonna fault a defense entirely of allowing thirty points when your offense is scoring three. You know, <laughs> when your offense is scoring three in the first three quarters, uh, you know, so it's really tough for a defense to play shutout ball. But against bad teams and against offenses that they're supposed to shut down, they shut them down. And 
The main difference between last year and this year is that they're forcing a shit ton of turnovers, a shit ton of turnovers, and I feel like Bobby Okereke has been a part of like at least half of them. Yeah, uh, I mean he has two interceptions, so like he's him and Darnay Holmes are now the team leaders for interceptions. Shout out Darnay. Um, he had the tipped up to Pinnock, right? Yeah, tipped up to Pinnock. That which resulted was a in a t- touchdown. touchdown. And then the tip up to McFadden versus uh, Josh Allen. So that's four That's four s- interceptions that he's been part of that he's created and then, then like forced fumbles. Yeah, so like he's created four interceptions and then he's had all other forced fumbles in the, in the season too. So just playing at an unreal level. Um, McKinney, I said on the giant factor. I was like, is are we like, can we see a ball touch Xavier McKinney's touch hands? Touch a football. Is he ever going to get an interception again? Well, he did in this game. Uh, you know, he had the play from center field. And he played a little more center field in this game, too. Yeah. Uh, had the play from center field on the sideline where he didn't intercept it, but uh, made a play on the ball. And then the interception was really good ball, right? And part of it is knowing your opponent, like where the Giants, the, the Patriots ran a play that the Giants like a lot, where it's that play action, deep post in the over, right? And kind of just scoffed at the deep post and, and figured, hey, Adore is going to cover this. Um, or I can't remember if it was Banks or Adore. And then the crashes down, cuts off the under interception right on Zappy, like making that play. That was very good. And it's, I was talking with somebody at the tailgate, right? And it's like, we kind of can get a good read on how the organization feels. Sometimes we hear shit with throughout all this McKinney thing. I don't know. I have no read on what their intentions are on Xavier McKinney. And maybe we can read some tea leaves from the Joe Shane press conference uh, Monday. But, like, I, I really I have no idea what their intentions are. The only thing that you could point to is they didn't re-sign him already. That's the only thing that you can really point to. Um, because you can make the argument, like, hey, Dable's, like, going to bat for this guy. Right? Yeah. And this whole I thought, I thought that maybe we had a we had a read on it. And then, they're, they're, you know, if, if the Wing Martindale, Brian Dable tension is being accelerated or it's being started by or it's being impacted by the whole Xavier McKinney situation, then, you know, we may not have a very good read on Brian Dable and Joe Shane's overall, you know, beliefs and opinions on him. Yeah, so uh, that's that's another thing to be seen for the rest of the season. How does McKinney play? And I, he's I still think, a good player. I mean, he's a good he's a good player. He's always been a good player. Thing. But it's, it's, he needs to play better to get a big safety con. And right. We'll, we'll do all more of this later going forward. Right. But. It was it was good yeah. to see him get back in the interception stat yeah. lines first time since. Do you remember? Um, was was it really the Raiders game? Was that the last interception that he had? No, I was in attendance for this. It was the Jalen Hurts uh, Majorda Mailata crying game oh. in two thousand twenty one. Oh. I thought the Raider game maybe happened after that. Remember, he told Jalen Hurts, his old teammate, "Hey, throw the ball to me." And oh, he, nice. And he did that. He, and, he, and, he, and he listened. It's remember, Jalen Hurts just like wasn't that good, and now he is. Um, Offensive line and trading for AJ Brown. That's true. Uh, I was. What was it? I? I did think the him coming over from center field against Mac Jones was a more impressive play. The interception is obviously like, hey, interception, box score, good. But I thought it was a more impressive football play, getting over there, playing center field like that, and getting a hand on that ball, almost getting interception. So I thought that was really impressive. Great catch by Banks on the interception. Now, they didn't show a good replay of exactly what. I don't know what the fuck Mac Jones was doing on that. But they were in the triple coverage. I don't know what he was I doing know the, the, the game. I know that the coverage was cover three, so he was playing the deep third, so it made a good play. I want to know what happened, if they were able to bait him into that. I don't I don't know what it was, but it was, it was bad. Um Adore Jackson, like you see the difference of him being in and out. Like you can play from off and drive on the ball um, and, you know, play in more man coverage and get in those situations. Uh, here's another thing with the corners, with the screens and stuff. Like we got to get go- – our DBs have to become better at getting off blocks and playing the run and making tackles. It's, a concern. it's, it's a concern with Deontay Banks. It's huge. And – I actually was listening to Amani Toomer, and he made a great point of it. Because, like, I talked, like, even you talk about the touchdown versus Jahan Dotson last week, where it's like, he's in great position, and he just doesn't, he's not able to burst on the ball, right? And you see sometimes from off coverage, he's giving that stuff. Is that he kind of plays a little too high, right? Where you see Jack Adore plays low, plays with knee bend, he's able to burst you out. You see ankle divers. A lot of guys are going after ankles, and that's how they make tackles. Well, I'm, I'm just talking even in coverage. Like, oh, in co- you know, okay. if you're in off coverage and they run a slant, right? Where Adore can. Gets gets low and is able to burst into that play, yeah. or at the catch space using your hips, right? And like that's you, where Banks hip, can be a little lackadaisical, where it's like, hey, sometimes he's playing a little too tall and leggy, mm-hmm. and he's not able to burst. And we, saw, I mean, we've seen it on the Ronnie Bell touchdown versus the 49ers and the touchdown, you know, last week with Jahan Dawson, where it's like you're in great coverage and you're just not able to burst on the ball and make a play on it. So, uh, I actually thought that was a great point by Tumor when you sometimes you listen to the post game radio. And, 
and it's like tumor's just, good. It's boring stuff. Tumor actually made a great point of that, and he, as a former receiver, he knows like he knows that type of stuff, and I, I thought that was good. Um, Jihad Ward career game. He had a career day. Ha- a sack second and a half, half, two QB hits, two tackles for a loss. Career day. Like that was that was. I mean, he had a great like spin move on the guard when they yeah. lined him up inside. Uh, you know, almost almost had that other sack. Um, Wick is back. Jihad Ward's back. Yeah, yeah, that was. It's kind of Benton Whitley. Oh, here we go. It was Thanksgiving weekend when this podcast a couple of years ago became a Chris Myrick podcast. Sure. I think we are on the verge of becoming a Benton Whitley podcast. He tells where he came from. He came from the Vikings. He played on the Rams in the past. Uh, he went to Holy Cross. Okay. At, in college, I mean, let's look at let's look. Let's Did go he come the, from the Chargers practice squad? That's we're gonna what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go through the Benton Wick Whitley Wikipedia page. Number forty eight checks into the game, and this is the first time this year. Which cre- hey, credit to me. I mean, well, also no, credit. I guess credit to the Giants. We had a lot of that last year. Who the hell is this guy? Look at this shit. Dude's from Massachusetts. Went nice. to Holy Cross. You don't think this dude's a Patriots fan? Mm. You know what? Went to Holy Cross for five seasons. Right. Gets undrafted. Signs with the Rams. Right. Mm-hmm. Signs to you know signed to the practice squad after his cut. Um, then the Kansas City Chiefs sign him off to the practice squad to their active roster, right? Then he gets waived a month later, you know, back to the Chiefs practice squad. Then the Vikings, like, hey, we want this guy off the practice squad. Uh, you know, then signs a futures contract with the Chiefs, um, and then uh, was waived after after cut down day, and then was you know brought on to the by the Buccaneers, and then now uh, he after being on the Vikings practice squad, he's on the Giants. He's going to get a sack versus the Packers in two weeks. I'm going to call it right now. Okay. Benton Whitley's he had that pa- he had that pass deflection on third down. If he gets a sack in the next two weeks, we are Benton Whitley podcast. He's on the podcast. Like we are. Uh, it sucks that Twitter with the name change shit. Like, uh, can we just change Talking Giants to at like Talking Giants Benton Whitley podcast right now? No. How long does it take to change back? I think maybe like a year. No, it's not a year because some other people have changed it. And it takes like a couple of days. Okay. Um, I'll but you you only can change it a certain amount of times. Well, how, we're only a Bent, we're not going to be changing to other pockets every two years. Chris Meyer, so Benton Whitley, second MVP of the game, uh, number forty eight. Jimmy Johnson is that why you like him? Take Router. Um, why don't you talk to us about something? Oh, I'll talk to you about something. Oh boy, DraftKings. Can you believe we're this deep into the NFL season? Pause. We got to make every second count with DraftKings Sportsbook. You can make the most out of every game day. Bet on your favorite teams for a shot at winning big bucks. New customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets for betting five on any matchup. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code WORLD. Talk to Giants versus World. New customers can get 150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on football. Bet $5 on football. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code WORLD. The crown is I yours. I won because I bet the Giants. I knew I was going to be there. It's a guaranteed lock. You know what? Anytime that Bobby If you Skinner, didn't bet on the Giants today, dumb. Dumb. You knew that Bobby Skinner was going to be here. It's like Boston Scott touchdown versus the Giants. Bobby Skinner out of game. Bet the win. Handshake. Money line. Never lost. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In West Virginia, visit 1-800- Oh, messed it up again. In West Virginia, visit www. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET. Please play responsibly. Connecticut help is available for performing gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, must be 21 or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details and state-specific responsibly gambling resources. Eligibility, deposit restrictions apply. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Terms at Sportsbook.DraftKings.com slash football terms. Bobby Skinner, you'll be glad you did. Okay. Can we take a shot at the beat reporters? Um, Actually, no, I'm not going to take a shot. I'm just going to re- just just read a reply. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kayvon had a solid game. Gets a half up. a sack, two tackles for loss. Bumping those numbers up. Bumping those numbers up. But still, you know, they don't go down from here. They go up from here. So they're still at double digits. Um, quiz, I told you this gotta before. got to get Kayvon to 15 sacks. That'd be sick. Told you this before we recorded, but I'm going to quiz you anyway. When was the last uh, Giants edge rusher to get double-digit tackles for loss for the Giants? 
Well, we talked about this last week. It's Marcus Golden. It's Marcus Golden. How many did he have? 18, I believe, right? 18 he had, and Kayvon Thibodeau now has 12. People thought Marcus Golden wasn't good. Yeah. We, People we, are going to be like, oh, my God, Kayvon Thibodeau. Oh, my God, he had double-digit sacks. And look at all the tackles for loss. Marcus Golden did it in 2019 on a terrible defense with a terrible defense coordinator. I can't wait to yell at Ben Whitley at, practice, at training camp next year. Um, <laughs> I don't think, what if he's not here? What if he's gone? You just then gave fire me, the GM. You just gave me a look. Aaron Ritchie, I wish our beat reporters had any info. They spent the last two weeks talking about chicken cutlets and Jersey juice. You know what? That's a, that's a great point. It is kind of a great point. That's, um, a, that's, a, that's a great point. Great Jersey point. juice and chicken cutlets. Mean, juice, mean, meanwhile, juice. meanwhile, the the most fascinating thing that could be is that bre- Italian could be brewing over the last month. And Wink Martindale, <laughs> Wink Martindale leaving the Giants is festering under their noses. And there's like, like, there might be like some issues with Kafka too, right? Like, there's been like some quiet rumblings like that they're not on the best terms. Like, and they could fire McGay. <laughs> like, there could be a clean sweep of coordinators, and it's like fucking. Is this Italian? The crowd was. It was they're they're into it. They're into it. Do you see Tommy DeVito and the family at the tailgate where he's smoking the cigar and Oh my god, yeah, they're the family's insane. I love it. We gotta get DeVito on this damn podcast. What if they don't like us? What if they're gonna they're gonna find us at camp next year? And be like I told you. And you're like, I, 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 told, to, I told you to talk about this guy in your blog. I told you. <laughs> yeah, it's like well we we'll start a blog. <laughs> um Talkingtrides.com is dead. Do you have anything like in-game stuff you wanted to hit on that um, we missed on? No. I have some private thoughts on. I need to think more about if shit hits the fan with these. I mean, Thomas McGay should be fired. Bobby Johnson should be fired. But if, shit's hit, if shit hits the fan with both of these coordinators. That's kind of a table issue. I need, I need to. I need because I was already having this like for JM football. You know, or kind of thinking about, does McDermott have, like, an issue with coordinators? Because it's like, this is now Brian Dable, where he, he he apparently bashed heads with him. And then Joe Brady, I mean, the Bills were still had, like, they were, like, top 10, top 5 at all these efficiency numbers. And I get Josh Allen's turn over the ball, blah, blah, blah. But I'm thinking to myself, does McDermott have an issue with coordinators? And, like, and how and his relationship with them? And now it's like... Does Brian Dable have an issue with? <laughs> with well, I mean, Dable part? like was willing to leave Josh Allen to come to the Giants. Well, I mean, it was an up, he got a head coaching job. No, I'm saying with Judge, right? And oh, you, yes. Even, and you even think like, you know, when the Brian Flores text messages came out and stuff like that, like there was a thought process like if you hire Brian Flores, you can get Dable as OC because his contract's done with Buffalo, um, wasn't wasn't extended there, and that he'd be willing to leave because he's butting heads with McDermott to come. So like it's. It's, it's interesting, like, and we got, like, we need to find out more yeah. info. And we, we got to see don't wanna, how this plays out. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to speculate on this, um, but the Glazer report isn't speculation to me; yeah. it's fact. But I don't I, I want to I want more info. Yeah. I really want more info to get some stuff out of this. And now the next important game is the next one because the Packers are coming off a good win against the Lions. I don't know who they're playing next week. The Giants have a bye week. Usually, I mean, the Giants aren't a good Giants haven't been a good team, but historically they're not very good off the bye week. Um, I, I always like your theory on. You know, usually, you know, teams coming off a bye week, it's usually like, oh, yeah, well, they should be rested. They should be ready to go. And, like, no. It's like coming off vac- – just think of when you get back from work off vacation. How it's, it's like, like you don't want to go back to work. It's, yes, you don't want to come back to work. It's hard to get back in the routine. Like, it's, it actually doesn't help. Yeah. So, I was thinking we can, – we can, let's do some scheduling right now. Because of this Wink Dable thing, and Joe Shane's going to have a press conference, do you think we should do our, like, interview or, like, have someone on the pod this week and then do the mailbag next week? Oh, yeah, while well, this is fresh, yes. Yeah, I think we might. I think we might do that. So we'll be back either, maybe Wednesday or thir- Wednesday or Thursday for the second part because it's a bye week, and then we'll have the mailbag next week, and then we'll have a preview part for the Packers. Yeah. Uh, midseason mock draft will be coming out next week too. Um, so excited about that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be taking a quarterback, right? Actually, actually, you know how I said like I'm not going to take a quarterback in it anyways because I like I want to do all my prep. Well, not, if I was kind of be in the point where like you know what, I'm just going to take Drake May if we have the second pick now I'm probably not going to take a quarterback so tune in for that yeah um, but I mean look, I I want to finish that point of the the next game is the most important game because we didn't really talk about dude this Patriots team is a disaster 
Oh, they're they're yeah. they're so. I mean, Mac, Mac Jones. That was I, I really, some of the worst quarterback play that I've ever seen. Yeah, it's that's the thing is like I know there's been heat on Belichick and there absolutely should be. Mac Jones sucks. Yeah, it's like, really bad. He is just a horrible quarterback. Like he's, I, I can't believe he is, has fallen this far from like the quarterback he was his rookie year. His rookie year is making like, some throws. There's you know? some coaching issues, right? But like it actually is much more Mac Jones than the uh, the coaching for me over there. I think Bailey Zappi plays the whole game. I think they win. Um so, Patriots are a disaster. So, so now it's like, hey, well, we said, can you, can Tommy DeVito, can the Giants' offense do it against a team that isn't the Washington Commanders? Right. Well, now we're saying, well, can they? You know, now, now I'm now I'm sitting here saying, well, you know what? Can they? Can they win a game? You know, we didn't even talk about the fact that this game could have went to overtime if it wasn't for a chip a, a chip miss field goal. Um, Part of me is rooting for another tie. Like it'd just be funny if I just keep coming. To yeah, ties. It keeps coming to ties. That would have been interesting for the for the streak the, for the stays tank. over. <laughs> it just keeps going on because of the tie. It would have been interesting for the ta- for tank purposes. But now you know. Now I'm in. Hey, I'm 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 invested. I'm I'm back into. You know, not saying the season's alive, but. I'm invested and I'm back into being like, all right, well, you know, Tyrod Taylor may may get cleared. This Packers game is a game that they could win and it'll it'll be home. It's probably going to be a primetime game. They have until Tuesday to decide that. I don't think they're going to flex it. Um, So it'll be a primetime game. What what can the Giants do? This is a it's a very, very young Packers team. Um, And I even though the floor is a good coach, I I. I want to think that the Giants have the coaching advantage there. So let's see it Monday night. The, the the most important game is the next one. Is that Italian? Uh, th- before we go, my Thanksgiving Day food pick this year went off. Yeah, had like four hundred responses. It was more believable than last year because it, it, last year was what did you post like? It was like bad spaghetti, spaghetti and like, like corn. But this this year was more because you that you turkey actually, did look like it looked like someone made that turkey to look bad for the internet. How bad it was! Yeah, but people believed it because people will believe it. I mean, I get believing it, but it was like I was just happy. It, it went off this year. Friggin' Thanksgiving is honestly like I look forward to Thanksgiving just to do friggin' Thanksgiving on Instagram. Friggin' Thanksgiving. What we you, also, what we also did my bro, my brother's race. Uh, How do you do live on Instagrams? So the skid race where they race with like just like skids as back tires. The car uh, his brake locked up. And then so for the flagpole, anyways, this flagpole race he did well, but he didn't have any right uh, right front brake because oh. he had to just uh, pin that brake off. Did so, he win? No, he didn't win. Tough. But he, we had fun, and that's all that matters. Uh, so we will see you guys later this week. Not exactly sure. Um, so we, we got to talk about the Shane Presser and, and try and get more information on this Dable Wink stuff. Um, I mean, you remember Mark Colombo got did get fired during the bye week, so we'll see what we'll see uh, all what happens. Uh, appreciate, when is the next time we're going to see you? Is it is it the Senior Bowl? It'll probably be the Senior Bowl. All right, I'll see you at the Senior. I'll Bowl. see you at the playoff watch watch event. Yeah, I guess yeah, what? the playoff watch party. I the mean, next they take hey, let's rip off six, go nine and eight, dude. Let's have a twenty twenty New York Giants finish to the season. You know, it would be let's uh, be let's be watching, you know, Falcons. Bucks Sunday yep. night football. Really rooting for one of those teams. <laughs> Let's do a live stream of that. We'll, we'll live week, stream week it. eighteen to to see if the Giants can make the playoffs and the Bucks bench Baker Mayfield for or Kyle sure, Trask or, or like uh you know the Arthur Arthur Smith puts in Tyler Algier. Where's Bijan? Yeah, yeah. That actually that's more believable. Um, all right, we appreciate you guys. See you at the watch party, Justin. Yep. Uh, we'll see you all later this week. Until then, let's go big. Blue.